What is going on everyone? My name's Boyt and I'm back with some more Age of Mythology, the Titans action spawning in the red color. Playing as Uranus, his name is Matrius. His opponent today in the blue color playing as Odin. You interrupted my introduction. Thank you for the 23 months, better claw. Appreciate the support, my friend. His name is Biker Boy, and he is playing as Odin. He's blue. This is exciting. This is um This is a matchup that has seen a significant hit to both of these gods. So both Odin and Aranos have been hit with the nerf bat, bat of doom. The, the nerf bat has been swung. Uh, and you will notice already that uh, this is felt by Mr. Biker Boy here uh, in a very, very uh, insignificant way, seeing as his nerf was down to from 750 food down to 600 food now. So uh, he's actually going to be getting exactly the same amount of zebra as he normally would on this map. So he's not going to feel that nerf in the slightest. He will, however, not have gotten any extra goats, which he probably could have gotten on uh on 5.0 he would have been able to get both of these goats here so that's nice where that's concerned matrius on the other hand here uh for those of you who don't know matrius not an Arano's player in the slightest he is a a poseidon player he plays some loki he plays some odin he plays some hades he plays some zeus he plays some ra i haven't really seen him playing much of Uranus at all so i am pretty excited to see what he's going to be coming up with matrius is one of those players who comes in to learning a new god and really has his own unique take on a lot of things like he came up with a fairly interesting build order for for loki which involved him um going with instead of four dwarves on gold he just put two gatherers on gold uh and, and two dwarves as well, so not four, but... And that allowed him to get what he decided or considered to be uh, an easier second town center as Norse. So I'm excited to see what Matrius is going to come up with. He is up against uh, Odin, which I think a lot of Aranos players uh, would, would say is one of the harder matchups for Aranos. But that being said, a hard matchup for Aranos is still basically 50-50 at, uh, at the very worst um, as Aranos is one of the stronger gods in the game uh just based on the uh, unique ability of having an extra 10 percent movement speed uh, it's really really strong and um that's that's just what what goes on with this god and we'll see how things are going to go but temple coming up for biker boy on these sorts of maps oftentimes uranos can find wins on a second gold mine on on the second hunt here really really early but with Uranus no longer having that shockwave on villagers Uranus is going to need to basically get a good shockwave on the enemy units in order to win some good fights rather than have a basically 100% chance to kill a villager if you see a villager you shockwave you kill a villager uh now Uranus is going to need a little bit more as we do see Prometheus coming in and already Matrius is doing something slightly Ooh. different. He's got three villagers on the gold here. He's going to be taking it off after a little bit there. He does decide to heroize a oracle yeah, and grabs himself the Pygmalion's statue. An extra 40% villager hit points here, ladies and gentlemen. That's a huge amount of hit points for an already 160 HP statted citizen. So Madrius is going to be having a very, very nice time not losing citizens in this game, most likely. And we'll see how things are going to go. He's already out on this position. He's scouting out the giraffe. Biker boy on this position. He's still eating the hunt. And it does finish up here. He'll be moving out onto this uh, position here. Right for 4.30. Uh, which is an interesting thing. You've got to keep these sort of things in the back of your mind when playing against Odin. When is Odin's hunt going to expire? Uh, and luckily here, we kind of know that... I think this was a three zebra uh, opener. Three zebra with great hunt means 4.30 is the time he's going to be on to his second hunt. So you can start putting some serious pressure onto him where that's concerned. As we do see the Prometheus and the Freya coming through. No surprises. Biker Boy dropping a longhouse down. Matrius over here. He's dropping down his military barracks. He's dropping down his counter barracks. He's got a lot of resources in the bank. Deciding not to get himself 
any upgrades here no hand axe no pickaxe no husbandry um i would recommend to get husbandry here as oranos look at all these goats that's so many 10 goats get husbandry nice and early You're gonna be able to get yourself a lot more food out of those uh, and you can see that he's floating those 100 wood 50 gold fairly frequently here at this position as well we'll see how things are going to go mattress is going to be getting himself his early heroes out and he will be valoring those biker boy on the other side here uh, he is getting himself some raiding cowboy. This is something we don't see all too often. Normally, it's more of an Ulfsark centric idea, but uh, maybe because Biker Boy feels like there's not that much hunt on this map, he wants to go for something a little bit different. Meanwhile, we do see the uh, the Valkyrie causing a little bit of problems here. The Promethean going to come through and get one or two uh, smacks onto that one before it does get away. You could drop an early shockwave down onto that Valkyrie to get a couple more hits on, especially if you've got a handful of. Uh, Terma heroes there, but Matrius opting against that for the time being. As even more goats are coming back into his base. Matrius has got so many of these. Still no husbandry coming through for him. I do think I, I, this has got to be... This, I, everything inside of my being tells me that early husbandry on Oasis is something that is value and you should be getting it. But uh, I know that sometimes things can be a little bit tough in the moment to, to kind of work out. Uh, and also you could get yourself pickaxe or you can get yourself hand axe and all those other things which give you a little bit more tangible resources earlier. Uh, but we'll see how things are going to go. Matrius moving across the map. Going to be looking for a little bit of a raid here. Biker Boy, he's already up to 60 population, which is a nice amount of population considering he's building raiding cavalry. Matrius is at 67 population, but a little bit of that is in these oracles, a little bit, and most of it is actually in the citizens, uh, as is probably going to be a little bit in front on those citizen count. Uh, situation there as Matrius pushes through here he could go after hitting the sentry tower if he so chose another option here which is really really strong we don't see it all too often is taking those term up and sniping enemy goats underneath the town center because they're all getting themselves more food here and if you snipe them down that's going to actually get some serious damage done we do see matrius here going to be getting caught out of position a little bit does kind of juke around here as the raiding cavalry will come through might be worth shock waving here just to keep his units nice and alive but matrius looks like he's a little bit caught out and the raiding cavalry do come around as well lots of picks here for biker boy this is really 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 good for him here after that raid these raiding cavalry are really paying for themselves at the moment as we do see a forest fire getting dropped down getting a little bit more damage done um and really? as i like to say you really only want to use forest fire on your terms if your opponent is already retreating uh, chances are forest fire is not going to be the best to pick off those units but these are so low such low hp units they're basically already dead maybe maybe just maybe Biker Boy got some value there yeah. as the Mermillo pushing out onto this position. The hunt just about to be expired. Biker Boy has gotten literally everything he could ever want in this game. How many shots does it take for a goat to get killed by a Terma? I would imagine it's three, um, but I'm not 100% sure. It's 4.4 DPS and they take something like two seconds to throw. Uh, I can't remember the exact animation time there, so you have to kind of times the the animation of the terminal workout that the damage per shot but I, I would imagine it's just the three uh the three shots there to pick off a um to pick off a goat as the house is getting taken down by biker boy we do see Yo. biker boy he's moving across the map and mattress is already out in kavoth style on this gold mine the citizen going to be retreating away he, matrius cannot make this retreat here he's going to be separating his citizen for the time being as one citizen here is going to get taken down this citizen is going to get retreated away it takes a long time to kill 224 hp of citizen there though as matrius is taking out a whole bunch of buildings over here he's very much out of position on this on this location there this citizen has made a break for it completely down the other direction there as the main base of matrius is now under attack we see some houses getting taken down as biker boy attempting to rebuild them over here with this ulf suck the mana getting taken down on that position there as well as another citizen getting sniped this is absolutely huge for biker boy 
in this game. We see farm starting to come down slowly here for Matrius as well. The hero Oracle gets sniped down. A handful of medium Mamillos sitting on that position there as well as the counter barracks is going to be getting taken out. The citizen retreating back here. We see Matrius swinging in onto this location as well. With his catapult, he's got a handful of Termi here, but there are a handful of Thrown Axemen as well. Not so many Hursa here. So if Matrius can take out those Hursa, those Prometheans are going to be very, very strong. And now Biker Boy is 115 pop. Matrius is 108 of 95 pop, getting his mana back up. Not going to be too big of a deal. He does have himself that Shockwave plus a Valor about to be ready there to help him out in this fight if he so chooses to use that one immediately. Generally speaking, that's what happens there as the moment. Milo going to be retreating back. We see Watchtowers coming up. There's a little bit of gold left in that home gold mine still anyways, as Matrius is just going to be taking his time at this point. We see the Dwarves up on this gold mine. Biker Boy, he's going to be heading to the Heroic Age here really, really soon. Uh, unless Matrius takes a really good fight here, which he probably should be considering doing, and then Biker Boy is going to have to make a decision whether he wants to build units or go to the Heroic Age himself as the Shockwave gets dropped down. That is a huge Shockwave, really slowing that DPS of that Norse army down. Is it going to be enough here after all of the death that Matrius has suffered so far through this game to win this fight? The Prometheans taking out those raiding cavalry nicely. Matrius does have defender's advantage here. His Mermillo completely tearing up the raiding cavalry over here, but Biker Boy he's managing to kill off those Promethean really, really nicely here. After the dust settles, who will come out uh, in an advantageous position here? Biker Boy down to 99 position uh, population. Matrius at 80 population here. Needs to throw down some more military buildings as he's got to pump out those units much, much faster, but he's kind of forgotten them here. At the moment, it looks like a fairly even fight after all is said and done. Biker Boy sitting night. Actually, no, Matrius loses that fight in a big way there. How are the upgrades going? No armory upgrades for either player here. We do already see the armory up for Matrius, but he's not gone for it just yet. Do we see pickaxe in? No pickaxe. Uh, just yet as the term are going to come through and try and snipe down some medium throwing axe from there though the term are a little bit too much time at the bar can't hit their target for the time being there as Biker Boy going to be retreating back we see some more units piling up onto this position here as well as Matrius here getting closer to that full population and this is the type of game that Matrius and Arano's players do want. Is Biker Boy going Heroic Age? No. The type of game that Arano's players want against Odin is the type of game which is an Odin player farming in the Classical Age. Why is that so important? It's important because it means that the Odin player is not going to be able to get to the Heroic Age easily. It's going to allow the uh, Arano's player to enjoy their, uh, their, their economic advantage, to enjoy having those citizens, which are giving them more value in the earlier stages of the game. The farm is being a little bit more efficient as well as the citizens pulling back here. The army going to retreat back for Matrix. He does need to have a think about how he's going to deal with these Tilpuan, Shkipan, Valkyries here as the army of Matrix moving away here. We do see uh, the... the, the the Raiders getting split up here. Going to be moving at a speed of 5.5 because that's how fast those Valkyrie move. But the Dwarves over here, they're going to get hit. Biker Boy might want us to think about retreating these ones off into the uh, into the side here. Preemptively as Matrius just going to be distracting for the time being, it seems. Uh, and Biker Boy here, you can see he's sitting at full population. You probably don't want to be at full population in... in comp comp you probably don't want to be full population kind of ever... Uh, unless you're at full population on villagers. You want to keep on pumping those villagers out as best as you can most of the time. As the uh, Matrius Micro here. This is what Matrius does really, really well. He does it really, really well with with Greek. And obviously here, the army very similar with, um, with Aranus as well. He wedges himself into that forest there. And now I get to say my favorite thing in the world. Imagine forest fire. Could have been a good one there. Uh, and at least it stops that those shenanigans coming through. Sometimes just holding forest fire is a better option than using it because you just prevent your opponent from doing those sorts of shenanigans. As Matrius microing nicely, we do see this town center is still coming up. Matrius is sitting here idle with these units, not aware that the town center over there is getting taken. 
Uh, and we'll see what's going to happen. Is Mattress's army getting kind of... Uh, killed quite a bit over here as well as biker boy now ready to go to that next age he's in a fantastic position frost onto this location here is going to be so obscenely difficult for matrius to deal with but matrius is going for thayer and what does thayer give oranos thayer gives oranos stymphalian birds which is a really really big deal as we see the units now pushing out for mattress going to be hitting this gold this is going to be the first decent raid the mattress is going to be hitting in this game and biker boy has not played around this in the slides a very simple defense to this would have been to send that old suck after he builds the armory and start building walls over here that's a really really good way for a uh, for Norse players to, to get the walls up, which other civilizations are generally able to do themselves. As we do see the dwarves fighting back here. Matria is going to be uh, pulling back, picking off a villager, pulling back, picking off a villager. This is a great way to get value raiding an enemy who's just going to be defending with the villagers there. As we see the Hesperids tree coming in, and this is a really big advantageous uh, spot here for matrius to be in because his army is split up attacking two different locations and he's going to be having those hesperid tree dryads coming out but biker boy's got this four town center up and we'll see how that's going to go as the throw and axeman come in onto this position to defend and matrius has to retreat back he is getting this town center the raven is spotting the town center out here as well as Matria is going to be retreating away for the time being here. He does have himself a decent amount of dryads, but the most important thing for Matria at the moment is to not bunch up his army, start spreading onto multiple different gold mines and seeing what he can do. He does have a nice defense on this position, but with six dwarves here, not dwarves, six, well, they're, they're gathering gold, so they're basically dwarves, six, uh, gather, uh, six citizen here getting frosted. That's a huge amount of economic damage going to be coming through here, but... The Stiff Alien Bird is in. Matrius is going to be able to take out some of these units. We do see the Town Center is up on this position as well. Matrius doesn't have any gold in the bank for the time being. He is in a very, very difficult position. But he's making himself some Contarius, and we'll see how he can go with those Contarius against this army. Generally speaking, I don't particularly like cavalry against norse but in this position those throwing axemen cavalry they're pretty good here against those throwing axemen 30 percent hack armor 71 um hp there versus the 11 damage of the contarius plus the 6.33 speed orano's contarius with that speed they can get onto those throwing axemen very very nicely so we'll see if that's going to be a thing as the dryads coming through harassing the ox cart over you're going to be taking that one out as the promethean pushing through after the frost is down can Matrius defend here is the big question as we see another shockwave hitting those strong acts and completely nullifying them for a around two to three seconds in that fight as the Prometheans plus the Dryads going to be tanking all of that damage and with those Contarius in the army now not getting bonus damage onto those Contarius is a really really big deal as all of the Thrown Axemen getting taken out and the Stymphalian Bird manages to clean up that Frost Giant there on the back or basically clean up the Frost Giant 40 HP remaining might not not going to be able to catch up to it maybe it, maybe it does I don't know uh, there it goes 22 HP and now Biker Boy he's going to be on the back foot Biker Boy here he's got him Himself, two towns and he's gone up to three he's got his mark down not going balder just yet but he's been pushed off of the gold mines fairly badly here as now the contarius raids are going to start hitting and matrius has found himself an advantage in this game but can he get the value out of it or not as the contarius starting to pick off some straggler throwing action this is exactly what he needs to do every little bit of damage here is a big big help for him as we see the army coming through going to take out some villagers on this position thinking about taking down the town center here as well taking the villagers down is going to be really hurting any sort of potential ragnarok from coming through as well as the valkyrie sneaking through onto this position uh Madras might want to consider heroizing some of these uh mermilla or something like that but it's not happening just yet as the ox cart gonna get taken down over here town center does get finished and biker boys three town centers at this point the old sark getting taken out over here as well and we'll see how things will get going here as the valkyrie gets cleaned up and the gold miners of biker boy are in what i would say is a fairly fairly difficult position to defend 
without any hill fort, without any walls. Biker Boy just needs a wall here, just needs a wall down here, and maybe a hill fort in the middle. And then the raids that Mattress is going for become a lot easier to defend. But it can be a little bit easier said than done in the heat of the moment. As now, Biker Boy making a good... Uh, Good decision here. He sees the Contarius and he goes, you know what's good against Contarius? Well, all Sarks are. And while they don't have a significant amount of bonus damage versus them, as you can see, it's only going to be 10%. They're doing a decent amount of damage and that is going to be giving them that advan uh, advantage against the Contarius there. But the Contarius, they're not looking for... for infantry kills here they're looking for villager kills as the Contarius coming onto this position can actually take the fight nonetheless pick off the uh the old suck and then start going after those villagers as the symphalian bird simply pulling away from those drawn axe we're not able to do a whole lot there as the Dryads coming through, going to attempt to defend on this position. There's a lot of Ulfsark and Thrawn Axemen here, but the Dryads, they are so strong on these fights. They're basically three population worth of stats and a myth unit, so there's no bonus damage coming through from those throwing Axemen. So they're really, really good on these fights. As the Contarius do end up getting taken down, Matrius here still on the back foot. He's still down two towns, and as the Citizen retreating back to the town center over here as well, as we'll see what Matrius can come up with here. Biker Boy's at 140 population. Matrix is at 104 population, but he has clicked up to the Mythic Age. This is where things get very, very spicy because guess what? Biker Boy's farming economy, he's got all of his farms in the one location, which means a really, really nicely timed Tartarian Gate in this spot is really going to slow Biker Boy down. He's got himself Winter Harvest, but he doesn't have himself Plow. That's a funny... That's a funny thing there. It basically, he's on irrigation with just winter harvest, which is a really, really big thing. But he could have himself that plow and have a lot more food in uh, in here. But if uh, if Matrius can simply just get that Tartarian Gate down, life gets really good. And guess what? The next thing here starts happening in this game: fanatics. Fanatics start coming out, and life starts getting really, really tough for the Norse player. Fanatics beat literally everything the Norse player builds, maybe with the exception of Mass Ballister, uh, which can also get killed off by Contarius. As we see, a that's not the Tartarian Gate I was personally hoping for. Yes, it might kill off this town center. Yes, it pushes off this gold mine, but the farmers are still gonna be completely open here uh, to, to gathering the food. But we'll see how it's going to go. Maybe this decision was the better one because picking off a town center rather than trading a whole bunch of uh, villages for a Tartarian gate might have been the uh, the better play. But Matrius here, we can see he's got himself a ton of these palaces. He knows what's coming for him. Can he defend it is the big question uh, because at some point here, Balder's going to come through. The game is going to be moving into a Ragnarok defense for Matrius. But... Matrius here, being able to pick off this town center is going to be huge for him because it really, really gives him all the advantages. Plus, while this is going on, he's found an advantage on this position. A couple of those Huskal are in. The Lampedi here is going to be a big defense against this. If you can make the Lampedi convert one of those Huskal, it actually ends up being a really big deal. Unfortunately, hitting the uh, the Ulfsark there instead of the Huskal, not really what he would have 100% wanted. As the Ulfsark are now swinging across this position, Town Center most likely going to be going down here with the Dryads to defend against those Huskal. Should be completely fine as the army going to try and swing around this uh, fire siphon, block that one up, take down these units nice and easily. Town center falls. Matrius going to be able to get himself that third town center. Is Matrius getting himself those fanatics? He's only building him out of one of those uh, one of those palaces there as we do see a shockwave. The final one being utilized there for Matrius, allowing his Ulfsark, sorry, allowing his Arcus to get a little bit more damage onto the Ulfsark there as the Dryads actually should be able to win this fight. Now, if Matrius has himself his upgrade, he doesn't. The Lampady can actually die and get a decent amount of damage done with that death, but very rare to see that uh, coming through there as we'll see what's going to happen here. One of the most important things about defending Ragnarok as Uranus and as Gaia is having out Lampady to convert enemy uh, enemy fire giants as we do see the uh, the the masons coming through and biker boy is still ignoring this tartarian gate it's got itself 2875 hp there because it's got the uh the the 
the Masons as the Frost Giants come through. Fortified Town Center's Masons is in, which will keep that one alive. The Frost Giants should be able to kill off this Town Center. It might be close, though. Depends on how much damage this Tartarian spawns do to it, but it does take quite a while for it to go down. We'll see how close this is going to be. More units coming through now for Biker Boy as the Champion Infantry now coming in. Going to be sniping down the Huskarl here. We see that Mermillo pulling back over here to take out those medium raiders as the Fnatic are going to be coming in here as well to help defend. As all of those raiders are going to end up getting sniped down. Look at the... I, I just want to take a quick a quick moment to pause here just to show you exactly how strong these are. They're doing 14 damage per second. They've got 100% bonus damage versus literally everything Norse can build. That's like 28 damage per second in three population worth of unit here. It's a really, really big deal. This is such a bonkers unit for Norse to deal with. We'll see what Biker Boy is going to be able to do to defend here as we do have the Citizen getting taken down. Remember, we still got Pygmalion statue. They've still got 224 HP. A really, really difficult uh, relic to kind of get over and pick off Citizen as the villagers getting harassed down over here. Matrius sees that. He realizes every villager he kills is a rag hero he's not going to have to deal with. But that being said, Biker Boy here, he doesn't really need to click Ragnarok straight away. He can get security of these gold mines. He can get that trade route in this corner of the map. If you can hold on these positions here, he should be okay. But it does seem like Biker Boy's economy, not as good as one might expect a Norse player's economy to be, possibly because he doesn't have that... Um, that plow and that uh, and that irrigation as the town set is still coming up here. Ulf, uh, a Hoskell over here with 6 HP causing some problems as the Ulfs are come through. Slowly going to take down those two citizens here. But it looks like the palace will get up on this position nonetheless. As the gold mine over here just about to be expiring it seems. Matrius has got what 2,000 gold left in that one. So he knows he needs to secure another gold mine here. Plus, he should be, uh, he should have in the back of his mind that it's really important for him to have uh, a lot of palaces around said gold mine. As the citizen going to start moving onto this gold mine here as well, grabbing that one uh, as well. Is Matrius building himself more citizens? I don't think he is. He's been losing them, but he does need to continue building them throughout this game, making some good trades here. Biker boy pushed back. He's one thirty of one sixty population, spamming villagers out like a crazy person as the Arcus come through going to try and take out those old suck on that position there uh, and we'll see how things are going to go as more dryads pumping in onto this position for Matrius and biker boy I mean he's just what are the upgrades he doesn't even have himself he doesn't even have himself heavy infantry and he's fighting infantry versus fanatics and champ champion fanatics at that, at that as well as the Arcus on the back here for Matrius there as well we do see the fire side going to come through and finish off this hill fort to boot and now Matrius can take a slight breather here, most likely. Oh, the Fnatic's coming through. I'm Fnatic's don't get a bonus versus Villagers. There we go. That's the answer to killing off Fnatic's. It's Villagers, right? No, the Fnatic's are still going to be doing 15 damage a second at this point. Sniping those Villagers down considerably quickly. As we do see some uh, Frost Giants coming in. And this is where you can start getting those Lampedes out. It's very, very hard for a Norse player to actually kill off a well microed Lampede. Run in, snipe a Frost Giant, run away. Run in, snipe a Fire Giant, run away. Every 20 seconds or so, you can you can make life very, very tough for the, uh, for the Norse player. We aren't really seeing that just yet from Matrius as he's sending his Fanatics around here on some sort of a loop to continue hitting that location. Biker Boy is defending it, but he's still not getting himself upgrades. It looks to me like he's considering trying to get to the, uh, the, the Mythic Age, going for a Ragnarok at this point. The question is, will it be enough? Because if we take a quick look at Matrius, he's got himself Masons. He doesn't have a whole lot of resources in the bank right now, but he has what I would consider to be the perfect upgrades and the perfect setup to defend against a potential Ragnarok at this point. But we'll see how things are going to go as the Frost Giants are going to get uh, taken down. We see some hero uh, Mamillos getting created. Again, this isn't, this isn't a unit I particularly like seeing against Myth units, just because I feel like just getting the Lampede out is infinite value, whereas your heroes are going to die over time. But we'll see how things are going to go. 
as is Biker Boy clicking up just yet? No, he's still struggling. He can't sell food for gold. He needs this gold mine. He's been pushed off the gold mine there as well. We do see a couple of raiding cavalry on that gold mine down the bottom. There are a whole bunch of villagers on this gold mine over here as well. If Biker Boy wants to make this happen, he's going to have to stop making units here and just call it a day and get hero and get mythic age because otherwise he's just not going to have the gold because he's about to run out of this gold mine here as the fanatic coming through going to start shanking down that ox cart as well here as matrius pushes in here with all of his army going to attempt to take out the gold mine biker boy is now at zero gold no chance of a mythic age here in this one for Bo for biker boy because there's units up on this gold mine there's units on this there's no gold mine over here there's no line of sight on that gold mine biker boy could potentially sneak that if he wants to but we do see some red units coming through there for mattress double palace on that position just in case a uh, just in case a ragnarok is coming uh, he's going to need to defend that. He's also got the potential to be on that top gold mine as well. As what else can Biker Boy do? He's got a thousand wood in the bank. He's got a two thousand food in the bank. Selling all of that probably not going to be enough to advance here. As all of his units falling in this game, and Matrius managing to find a really, really solid position here. The next uh, question Matrius is going to need to pose is: Does he go after the town center, or does he just run after villages here? which can be a, a very nice way to preemptively win against a Ragnarok is just continue killing the villagers as Matrius pushes in onto this location here. We do see the Frost Giant defending over here. Hero Fanatic in the building. How much bonus damage does that get? 450% bonus damage against Myth Units. It's doing like 40 damage in attack and it attacks like... Yeah, it's doing what? 40 damage? Something like that. An attack that's absolutely wild considering how much armor it has. As the villagers all pulling back into the town. So they're going to dive in there. As the villagers getting cleaned up on that one. We see more units pulling in here. As the town center has got to be the next port of call. Biker Boy at this point now though. He's almost got himself the resources to advance. There he goes. He's going Balder in the hometown center. He's got 90 population. His villagers are falling. The ox caravans are getting taken down. And he is going for that Ragnarok very, very late here. Matrius, double palace up on this position. How is his resources going? Matrius has got some good upgrades coming through now. Bronze, mail, iron weapons. Villagers getting cleaned up in the main base here. Matrius doesn't mind this in the slightest, losing his, uh, losing his units. At, the, at this point to pick off these villagers because every villager he picks off as we said that's a potential rag hero and not only that we see the town center over here going to be getting taken down to boot as all the ox caravans getting cleaned up here as well but biker boy he knows he knows how it works can the uh can the defense can the can the victory come here with only what looks to be 80 75 villages. Like, how many villages do you have? I guess we'll see once the Balder comes through. But the Ox Caravan is getting taken down. More villages in this position falling. Town Center about to go down here as well. As Matris is on this gold mine. This is the only gold he's got at the moment. He's got himself 12 villages on this position. He's also got himself a ton of food and wood in the bank. Not a lot of villages on the wood at this point, though. He probably doesn't need to build a single Arcus anymore. Probably just use the wood to build palaces moving forward because all he really needs is Lampedy and Fanatics to defend here. As Biker Boy, 62 population left. Ragnarok going to get clicked immediately here. Goes up to 165 pop. Is that going to be enough? Answer is we don't even get to see because Biker Boy doesn't want to see it as he does decide to tap out here. I mean, funnily enough, because the tribute counter here, uh, the trade value counter is at 18 here. Funnily enough, this Ragnarok, if it was, if it was able to beat the army that Matrix is able to produce to just push off of this gold mine, potentially wall off this gold mine over here as well, Matrix probably loses this game in a way, maybe. Just if he pushes through here, because this is the only gold he has. There's no real way to trade, um, and Biker Boy here is going to have an army. So just imagine that all this army was deleted, and, and, and Matrius had nothing else, and he got picked off of this. And there was 165 pop of rag heroes left. 
Biker Boy would have won this one. But because there's the army up, because it's Fanatics, because these units are ridiculously strong, you can actually compare the stats quickly. 16 damage times 100%, which is going to be your 32 damage a second, versus 15.4 damage, plus only 30% hack armor. Plus the Fanatics, I think they've even got more HP. You know, 174 HP, 51% hack armor. In every single metric, the Fanatics are doing more damage here, which is how... Atlantean defends against the rag. But Matrius, he played this one uh, very, very well after the fact. He made a really, really bonkers crazy raid early and that put him behind by a big way. He lost a lot of units there early and that allowed Biker Boy a bit of an advantage, but Biker Boy couldn't quite get, like maintain the advantage in this game uh, for possibly making some strategic mistakes here and Matrius finds the dub if you guys enjoyed this one please consider hitting the follow on the twitch if you're on the youtube hit that subscribe button and i'll see you guys in the next game